you guys sit down. I'm calling you out right now. You looking at me? They're not. How's everybody doing? How's VidCon going so far? You're plotting for absolutely nothing. Nothing has happened yet. This is the first thing. Um, so. I just want to thank you all for, uh, for coming out, being here, sharing your ideas and your passion and your insights uh, with each other and with this conference and with this community and this industry. It's really important to me that, uh, that the industry track is a thing and that we do this thing together. Oh, uh, hey, that's up there now. My slideshow's working! Um, and then, this is just sort of a nutty thing that I noticed that people have, I, I did the math. I've killed 75 people <laughs> with my videos, and that makes, that makes me feel kind of like I need to take that responsibility somewhat seriously. Um, but thank you uh, for coming here, especially because I know a lot of you would rather be watching the Germany-US uh, game World Cup is happening. Uh, I don't personally care, but John is back there watching his iPad right now instead of watching me. Uh, we will give you periodic updates. As far as I know, it is still 0-0. Zero, zero. I don't have a lot of hope, you guys. <laughs> if there, are there any Germans in the audience? Yeah! Well, congratulations. <laughs> John is back there being very angry at me. Um, I do want to first thank our, uh, some of our sponsors without whom we could not do VidCon. Uh, this would not exist. This stage would not be as badass as it is. People would pay a lot more money to come to the conference. Um, also, I want to thank you uh, for paying extra so that the people down there can pay less. Thanks for doing that. Um, so obviously YouTube without whom like none of this would exist, uh, even without their money. Uh, we have a car sponsor two years in a row now, Kia, which is amazing to have. Uh, never thought that would happen. Um, Headline News is our exclusive broadcast partner. They're like actually going to put VidCon on Headline News. Um, and then our gold sponsor is NBC. Thank you for also making really great content. Friskies, thank you for bringing Grumpy Cat and the Collective Digital Studios. Uh, thank you for being just a really great sponsor to work with. It's been fantastic to have you as part of this. Um, so I make online video. I'm going to give a little talk. I don't usually do that, but I'm going to give a little talk this year. I make online video and I do it fairly well, apparently, because I've killed 75 people. Uh, I'm not like the best in the world at it or anything, but I, I do do it professionally. But I want to tell you a secret. I don't know what I'm doing. At all, no idea. I just like mm, it's, I, and I don't, th and like I don't think that that's like I don't trying to like disqualify me from being an expert here. I don't think any of us know what we're doing. There's a wave, and you don't have to read the, the words on this graph or anything. Just recognize that this is a graph that goes up. There's a wave, and it is made of what I don't know what it's made of. It's and it's made of like technological things and sociological things, and it's individual people making individual decisions about how they're going to spend their individual time, and we are writing it. And that's impressive, but it is not as impressive as like understanding the wave. We're just standing on it. And that's like, that's great, and everybody who can do that, whether they're new to the game or not, they're kind of new to the game, the Mickey Mouse. They, uh, it, I am glad that we are able to do it, and I think that we should be proud of it, but we should not feel like we are responsible for it. Uh, now, then there's a lot of people at the conference who are going to be talking about uh, the mechanics of the wave and how to harness the wave, and, and I, I kind of think that we all have that sort of, that sort of goal. Um, and as far as like technology and startups and like global localized ubiquitous mobile pre-roll things, like those are great and I need them to make my business work, but that's not really what I'm obsessed with. If you are obsessed with that, we have these badges and it says it says to write what you're passionate about on your badge. And I like I think that's just a good question to ask people because I mean I put giraffes, so I'm obviously not taking it very seriously. But uh, but you should. Um, and even if it, you know, it is something serious, silly, I think the, the, you want to know what people are passionate about. And like, that's a really good question to ask people who you don't know, even though it's a little bit weird, but I'm giving you permission right now. Um, I am passionate about content. Now this was the first online video content that I was obsessed with in college uh, because it was kind of made exactly for me. Do, do, does this look familiar to anyone? Okay. <laughs> Good, good. 
The internet has a very short memory. I was just talking to Bernie Burns about that, lamenting how we're forgetting about all the amazing things that happened in 2001, ages ago. Um, that content was made for me. It was made very specifically for me. I'm, I'm, on, I'm on the right there. Uh, I was a college student, I was a nerd, I was obsessed with the internet. That content was being made by college students who were nerds who were obsessed with the internet for college students who were nerds who were obsessed with the internet because that's the only people who had internet fast enough to get it. Like, that was the demographic and it was me. It was basically the internet being obsessed with itself. Looking back, it's a little bit narcissistic, but it was a great time and it was a great time to be involved in that community as a consumer of the content, not a creator of the content. Then, 2000, 2005? Isn't this beautiful? Yeah. Look at... Oh, do you miss 2006 YouTube? I mean, I know that objectively it is much better now, but look, it's just so cute. <laughs> so, that happened, and, in, and suddenly, instead of like, if you're obsessed with the internet, you can make internet content, and the internet makes internet, internet things, it doesn't matter what you're obsessed with. You can make any kind of content, as long as you have a camera, and this became like a global experiment that we do not recognize the significance of. Anything can be made, anything can be watched. What do we s decide to make and watch? It's the first time we've ever had that opportunity in the world. And we don't even think of it like this like marvelous experiment in like the, like the psychology of humanity. <laughs> We make anything, so that's, that's the, these are the questions that I want to ask here at VidCon, and I don't have great answers for these questions. Uh, why does what gets made gets made, and why does what gets watched gets this a very difficult sentence to say. <laughs> um, so I do have some ideas. Number one, underserved markets serve themselves. Teenagers make content for teenagers because there's not a lot of teenager content being made. It's sort of shocking that the, like, the amount of content being made for people between the ages of 10 and 17 is just like, surprisingly nil. Like, there's Disney Channel, and that's, like, there's not a lot, and there's like four movies a year. It's just, like, kids don't have enough, like, teenagers don't have enough content being made for them, made for them so they made it themselves. And it's really popular, as you can see if you look downstairs. <laughs> uh, things that shouldn't exist start existing, uh, so that might be content for teenagers that isn't particularly appropriate for teenagers. We have lots of that as well, uh, but they're making that decision now, we don't get to make that decision for them, and really, like, culture is weird about making decisions for people, and I'm not sure that it's actually that good at it. Also things that you wouldn't get on normal TV because it's dangerous. Like this one with the little girl getting hit by the snowman head. I mean, <laughs> Scary Snowman is funny, but no network executive would ever approve of it. <laughs> Uh, it helps if there's a way to make money, so shout out to YouTube for sharing money! Um, I, we, sometimes people complain about how much money YouTube takes, and I'm like, well, how much money does Twitter take? How much? I mean, all of it. I make a lot of Twitter content, and I don't get paid for any of it. <laughs> they just don't like worth a lot of money. I didn't get any of that. You know, whenever, whenever a, a social media company has an IPO, I'm like, where's my cut? I made all of your content. Uh, so yeah, uh, it helps that there's a way to make money. That has tremendously influenced the YouTube ecosystem. Thank God. Thank God. Uh, it has to be kind of easy. It doesn't have to be easy to make great content, but it has to be easy to make some kind of content. So 10 million people will try it, and 1% of them, or 1.1%, no, 0.01% of them will be good, and it will be thousands of people who make really excellent content. That's why a lot of content on YouTube is one person with a camera, and you are shocked at how good this person is at it. It's because there were a lot of people who weren't that good at it. Oh, I skipped one. And then there's this place of cultural tension. Now this is a weird thing. It's where, like, this is like in rock and roll, this is sex and drugs, right? It's the things that we are ashamed of, but we worship it anyway. And in, for teenagers, it's less sex and drugs, thankfully. Uh, it's more makeup, where the world is telling you to be beautiful, but also that beauty is only skin deep. And there's like this, like the overt cultural message is don't worry about how pretty you are, but the covert cultural message is from the day you're born, be beautiful, be appealing, you know, be a Barbie doll. Uh, and so there's this cultural tension that we don't discuss, and that becomes the thing that people are interested in talking about. Same thing with video games, where parents are telling their kids to go outside, but culture is telling them to stay inside and shoot things. 
Uh, so those are our two biggest markets, like our two biggest genres on YouTube is makeup and, and video games. I think because it's these, this place of like, culture's kind of ashamed of it, it doesn't want to make content about it, but once you allow it to be made, it gets made. And it gets made big time, and it's very exciting for a lot of people. Um, and I'm very excited that, basically, that that's allowed. Um, so all these things add up, like you look at this list and like makeup and video games fall perfectly into it, so does a lot of content that we make. Uh, and the point of all of this is I just want us to be thinking about these things. You know, I want, we are all creators, we're all enablers of creators. The fact, like, and I sometimes feel like creators feel like they are separate from the technology and the technology feels like it's separate from the creators. And whether you're solving technology problems or human problems, same deal, right? And I, and I want us to be considering all these things, especially content problems, throughout the entire ecosystem. I want us to be thinking about, like, even if we're creating content, because we are at a point here, and everybody's talking about how our, the, this like culmination of online video, and if I can give any piece of insight at all, it's that we are not at any kind of culmination. Just because we're at the top does not mean that it's not still going up. This is a big deal, and we are at the very beginning of it, and we get to define it. We get to decide how those things are going to be made, what the structures within which they're going to be made are. And so we get to say, like, if this is a thing that you know, we could say, like, if this is a monetization strategy, how does that affect what kind of con content gets made? Like, how do we create monetization strategies and business strategies that end up making the right, like, end up encouraging the right kind of content to be made? That's the sort of thing that I'm obsessed with. I, I guess I'm an expert. And I'm at least a mass murderer. Uh, so thank you all for, for coming. Um, and I have totally forgotten who I'm introducing. Oh, it's my brother! <laughs> what? It's not my brother. Hi. Hey, Green, everybody. It is nil-nil at halftime. Uh, and Portugal has scored against Ghana. So that is very good if you love America and freedom and justice. <laughs> The person Hank was supposed to introduce <laughs> is a long-time uh, early YouTube employee who has gone on to, uh, to do amazing, amazing things um, and is going to share some wisdom with us today, George Trompos.